Hey, what's happening? We are back. Dirty South podcast, board wrestling, SC wrestle. It's been a, a heck of a month. Uh, we've been traveling all over the place and uh, finally back from Fargo. And we're here and we're going to talk Fargo, wrap it up for the Southeast. Yeah, man. So for those of you that uh, haven't seen, I think the last one we did was me driving in the car and uh, <laughs> it pausing all the time as we were trying to do a second preview. You were on your way to Lima and, <laughs> yeah. and then, then I'll tell you, you know, I, I write that the, that Fargo is a circus. I, I don't know that unless you've been there, you understand how much of a circus it is. It is 30 mats. You got kids all over the place, taking pictures of them, trying to get information, trying to, I mean, look, it's set up the best it can, but it can be for us because we get, you know, we can sit and we can work and we can do lots of different things. But there's just there's just so many people and there's so it much is. going on. Um, it's it a ton wild. of fun, but it is it is crazy. I will say, I will say, I love the Greco days because it kind of spreads out a little bit. You know, there's a lot more room to kind of maneuver. Now to the freestyle days, man, you're like you're trying to fight your way through different places to get oh. to a position and everything else. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm trying to run through because. I think um, I don't know. It might have been KJ or or one of those guys was on on mat three. I think it was on the front corner there from the stage, and I'm all the way over by eight, and uh, I'm trying to come over, and I I bump into this lady, and she's she's she yells at me like, "Excuse me!" I'm like, "Oh," but I I didn't do anything to her there. I I went through and got to my place so I could take pictures of the kids. And then I noticed she was the really nice lady that was walking the finalists when they come off over to get their photos taken. So I walked over to her and I'm like, man, I'm really, really sorry. And she's like, I'm just tired of getting bumped. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I feel your pain, but I just wanted to apologize. But there's just no way around it. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, for those of you that are interested, you you might, if you want, if you look, go through the photos I took and you see the patterns, you see patterns and, and the patterns are, you know, I'm on seven, eight, nine, you know, that area of the of the tournament. And I'm taking pictures and there's Southeast kids coming up all the time down in that area. And then there's a kid I want to take a picture of who's over on 30 or 29 or whatever. I mean, we're talking all the way across. And to walk there would be no big deal. To walk there with 10,000 people in your way. I, I mean, I was missing oh. matches left and right. Yeah, you know what I started doing? I started beelining through the mats. So I said, yeah. okay, I'm going to take a shortcut. I know it's a little illegal procedure there, but I would I would go right between the circles, shoo, and then I'd zigzag through the people, zoom, hit another one, zigzag, zoom, because there's just no way. There's no way. But, and, yeah. uh, and it was awesome. But, yeah, and, and for me, I, obviously, I'll have to default to Jason a lot. On the girls and uh, and the first the first day uh, day and a half of freestyle because I was um, down in South America at Lima Peru, which was really really cool to see that I got to to go with Team Puerto Rico, uh, also got to see Team USA and and got to meet a lot of people from Brazil and Canada and Ocho Rios and and different kids from the states that are competing in in all, in all those different countries and. We have coaches from from Florida that were coaching on some of those different teams, so uh, it was it was pretty cool to to go and experience that. Uh, I've never been a part of anything like that before. I mean, I, I was at the Olympic trials, but it was it was still very different. As big as the Olympic trials is, this was more intimate, where the the boys come out of a tunnel or the girls come out of a tunnel and they stand there. And when you're on deck, you're just standing there watching everything going on. And then, and then you get walked to your mat and everything. And, but it was cool. It was cool to meet everybody and, and get to see some of America stars and some of South America stars and some of the Island stars and uh, just, just awesome. But then to, to jump on a plane and go from there to Chicago, there to Miami, to Chicago, to you, to get right on the mat at noon was quite a feat. 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was like The Walking Dead, everyone. So <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it was. And your wife's like, um, you're crazy. You don't want me to take you to the house. I'm like, nope, let's get going. So yeah, it was it was and, and that night we were we were we were doing pictures and I think I think my my head just hit the table almost. And you're like, all right, it's you need to go. To you need to go to sleep. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Um, um, the, you know, the girls, um, you know, we're going to recap the girls first because, you know, they were actually the first ones. Yeah, to... and, 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 I, and I mean, I mean, we can, we can throw something out like real quick. And I want to mm-hmm. say to you, um, just real quick before we get into girls, uh, Southeast now, uh, this is uh, for what you covered and, and what we're, we talk about when we talk about Southeast is. Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, and the two Carolinas, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's seven. I got that right. And Florida. I said Florida probably. Right. So those states, um, all Americans, total of all Americans were 59. Uh, there was five champions, but six stop signs. We had a young man from Georgia brought home two. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing that was really cool was 11 runner-ups. So we were, I mean, so close to just I mean that could have been a lot more but 11 Southeast boys and girls in total in the finals Um, so that's pretty cool Tennessee with 14 All-Americans one champ Georgia 14 Uh, two champs one of them was a double champ as we just mentioned Florida had 19 All-Americans unfortunately zero champs South Carolina had seven All-Americans one champ so shout out to Zoa Zayo, sorry, Zayo. Zayo, Zayo. I got all the letters right. Um, Alabama, five All-Americans, zero champs. So with that being said, I know we'll get into the girls first and I'll have to default to you, but pretty good showing for the Southeast. I mean, 59 All-Americans, five champs, six stop signs. Yeah, so you, you, asked, you asked that question in an email, or not an email, in a text to me before we got on. And I did some thinking about it. And... You know, it's it's um, I, I think everything is is kind of gives it give and take. There are pluses and minuses. There are there are things that are awesome about it. And there are things that are, you know, well, we could have done better in this particular situation. Um, the first thing I think that you have to pay pay attention to is the fact that all seven states were present. So Mississippi, Bear Bryant Siegel. Congratulations. First Mississippi wrestler to compete in Fargo. Um, it is a great thing. And I hope that it continues to grow and continues to be a thing. Um, you you have to start somewhere. And yeah, Bear Bryant did not have okay. the, the tournament that he wanted to have. I know that. I know Mississippi probably wanted to send more. But you start where you start. And you don't get to numbers like this and having someone on the stage and wrestling for a national title or national titles or double champs overnight it takes time so i think it's pretty cool to have mississippi there yeah. i think that's and if they bring and if they bring two next year they've increased to 100 percent. they've increased their athlete take by 100 percent. yeah no and, and you know and it's a little bit at a time and there, I think there's got to be more than that that wrestled there i mean come on mississippi no, Let's there go. and there is, and there is, but but you know, they only started high school sanctioned high school wrestling not that long ago. So that's awesome. You know, um good stuff. Well, you said about Alabama. I mean, we were talking about Alabama a little bit, and I kind of default to you with that. And you were really excited about their showing um having five all Americans. Um that that hasn't happened over the years, right? I mean, so that's growth right there for Alabama. Yeah, so so Alabama is a, a, a perfect example of a peaks and valleys kind of state, right? If you look back to 2019, they had one All-American. You look back to 2021, they had two All-Americans. If you look at the Fargo Almanac, many of their All-Americans, and there's not a ton, happen within the 2000s. So we're talking about a state that is so very small, like in terms of numbers. In 2022, they had 10, so... They had a really, really good showing in 2022. They had 20, in 2023, they had five. Um, so, you know, one of the things I think with Alabama was 
they didn't get a girl all American this year. They've had one. Um, I don't know if they've had one every single year, but but definitely Evan Hol- Evelyn Holmes Smith. Um, there were several individuals who had a shot to make the podium and didn't. Um, the continued growth for the girls, I think, is going to be really important. But the junior boys um, and the 16 new boys, the 16 new boys, both in Greco and freestyle, they struggle a little bit. It's almost like they're beginning the process, whereas these kids from Illinois and Pennsylvania have been wrestling Greco and freestyle since they were like, you know, could walk. The Alabama <laughs> yeah. kids are like, you know, maybe maybe they maybe they have three or four years experience, but they don't have the same number of experience or level of experience. When you get to the juniors, things change. You know, in years past, Corey Land this year, Deshaun Poe, right? You you had um, Jamison Thomas, you had Will Atkins. I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to list everybody um, and remember everybody's names, but you know, you had kids who it was their first time on the podium. And kids who will be back to Fargo or have an opportunity to come back to Fargo in the future. So talk about building on success, having kids who have made the podium and have a chance to come back. That's a big deal. Was this, was this Evelyn's first time up at junior? No, this is her second year at juniors. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she was, I mean, she was she one was match away. Round. She was in the blood round. Yeah. Yeah. She was awesome. I would have liked to have seen her do it, but the stuff happens and that's it. But man, so I, I mean, do you want to go, uh, you want me to, to go state by state? You want to just talk wrestling? You want me to ask you who surprised you, who didn't surprise you? What, where do you want to go? Yeah, let's, um, let's go. You know, that's a good question. I was going to start with the girls and kind of go through that, but I actually think uh, the way we're doing it right now makes sense. So let's shift to a state and let's shift okay. to a state that's surprised. What's a state do you think that surprised lots of people? I I'm going to I'm going to say Tennessee. Okay. So there are two for me there are two states and one of those two states is Tennessee. Why Tennessee? Um they had a huge they had four um Four All Americans in junior men Greco. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had four All American, or they had four All Americans in sixteen U women's, and they brought home a champion in Jania Johnson. Three All Americans in Tennessee, in in men's Greco and freestyle. So they, what's what's crazy is so they had they had a couple champs which gives them the point standing, right? So even though Florida had 19 All-Americans and Tennessee had 14 All-Americans, I think it is, because of the the way the points work as far as placement um, and a champion, they they showed higher in the point standings. Um, Yeah. yeah, Well, and and exactly what you're talking about. So all you have to do, so you mentioned a couple of their champs, Shania Johnson, right? Champ which was unbelievable in 16U. She was great. But you look at it, Caroline Hilton, second, 16U girls. Ella Murphy, second, junior girls. Hudson Chittam, second, 16U boys, both styles, right? Um, Ryder Smith, second, 16U men's freestyle. I mean, you had a lot of finalists from, from the state of Tennessee. Um, Jose Cordero made the finals for Tennessee um, on junior boys. You had a lot run to that point. They couldn't quite get over the hump to win it, but man, um, you had a lot of Tennessee singlets in on the stage when at the end of the tournament, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And and, I mean, you could hear as you're as you're around the arena, you know you always hear like coaches talking, other states talking, referees talking. We sit around the media, so we hear whispers there, and and a lot of a lot of people were saying, "Man, Tennessee has really come along." And you could hear people talking about Tennessee, and it was uh, it was good to hear because you know we know a lot of guys from there, and they do a great job building that state and that wrestling program, and yeah. It was, yeah, it and, was good to see and just go. so everybody knows, just so everybody knows, there's a huge Florida connection to the state of Tennessee. 
Um, so Mike Catcher, who is the state chair for the state of Tennessee, used to coach when I coached back in Florida. He coached at Martin County High School. So for those of you who don't know, Hatcher is now kind of helping direct some of the stuff that happens up in Tennessee. Um, as a state chair, I'm sure he's kind of directing a lot more than he probably wants to necessarily. But <laughs> and you you have seen you have seen their programs get better. They had 11 All Americans in 2019. They had six in 2021, but 2022, they had 17. Now they've had 14. They've had 14, 14 last year, 14 this year. And we're not talking, and it, there's nothing wrong with taking seventh or sixth or something along those lines, but there were a ton that were second. Um, yeah. that, it it was mean, an it, impressive it was... showing by the state of Tennessee. Yeah, and um, I don't know if you saw uh... – did you see my show with Mace on Team I, Florida? I didn't yet. No, I've been unfortunately so was, everybody. I have kind of gone a little radio silent because I have my job that I'm like trying to catch up with. <laughs> yeah, so well, getting there. I, but before we go to to another <laughs> state, but um, how about that? I mean, that Chittum family. Wow. I mean, they the the. I mean to to, to be in the finals. And take second both in both styles. Now, did he did he face um, Mills both times? No, he faced Mills in freestyle. He did not face Mills in in Greco. Mills they missed separated weight. the weight. Oh, Mills was Mills missed weight. The <laughs> like the for Greco. Um, yeah, and my my heart goes out to Hudson. Like um, little little Hudson Chittum is one of my he's one of my favorites to watch. He's he's <laughs> just a great kid. He's he's. He's so much fun to kind of watch him wrestle and kind of be around just as a person. And um, yeah, to come up second um, twice, man, that's, that's, that's tough, but he, uh, he, he's great. And, you know, I'll tell you, if I'm going to point to a particular direction, Baylor, Baylor had some, some real success. The night, the Norman boys, Hunter Sturgill, they also had Gabe Swan, who wrestled, who won it for the state of Georgia, but will be at Baylor coming this fall. So huh. they will have four All Americans in their lineup, Fargo All Americans in their lineup, um, come this fall's team. Wow! Well, a good job by them, and a good job by Tennessee, and look forward to seeing it. You know, um, so pivoting to Florida. Mm-hmm. The uh, 19 All-Americans. We had one in the finals with uh, um, with Giovanni, Giovanni Solis. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, maybe you saw the post. I mean, just for him to come back and wrestle Greco that hard and then and then go through after his injury. Um, I mean, I remember seeing him after one of his late round freestyle matches and he's rolling around on one of the practice mats holding his knee in severe pain. Um, but uh, I had all the kids, you know, I had some of the All-Americans on my show when we first got back. And uh, I, I asked them. Did you so did you what? do it one at a time or did you get everybody on one thing? Everyone on one thing. I couldn't get uh, Joe I couldn't get Tovar because he had a biology test. But I gave him my phone number and I told him to reach out anytime he would like to come on. Uh, he doesn't speak that much right he's kind of like to himself a little bit giovanni which is good quiet. fine by yeah. him but if he wants to come on he can but yeah i had him together but he said uh well the reason i kept going is my brother ej took fifth in greco and i i had to do better than him so i had to i had to go <laughs> i had to go wrestle greco but uh that was cool but all the all those guys i mean obviously um you know, in Greco, one, two, three, four, five, freestyle. That's for boys, freestyle boys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then of course the the girls, uh the girls in Florida, two, sixteen U and um and three, or no. And one, two, three, four in, in girls. One thing I noted about Florida, and I, I'm the I mean I to tell you now, I wasn't there for the girls, so you'll have to talk about that. Um, I, I, I was, I was happy. You know, I know Maya Bethel is a, as an absolute hammer. She ran into a hiccup there early in the tournament because I was trying to keep an eye on her. 
But uh, kudos to her for coming all the way back and taking third. I mean, she had mm-hmm. to come all the way back. She had to mm-hmm. wrestle through that gauntlet. So uh, good for her and, and congratulations to those. But as far as the boys is concerned, you'll hear some people whisper, and I asked Mace about this, you know, well, no, but one in the finals, you know, we've had champions all these years. Was it a down year? So my response is, and, and his is, well, first of all, three of our champions didn't even wrestle this year, right? Because one is through surgery. One is competing, is training for a world team. And, and as far as a, a girl, I saw her in Lima take a gold medal, right? But correct me if I'm wrong. There was 20 or more boys in the on the freestyle side in the blood rounds and and i I remember you writing about it saying wow florida leads the way with with 20 or 22 in the blood round and they were all underclassmen you know eighth grade ninth grade 10th grade maybe some 11th grade in there so the youth of florida the process is working and 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 I feel like it's gonna the bubble's gonna burst here shortly. What is your opinion on that? Did 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 Mason confirm that it was like that many in the blood round, or did he mention uh, it? Or... He didn't confirm, but I remember um, I remember counting through it, and I remember you you put out a uh, on one of your review boards where you said uh, you know Florida was leading the way with a number of with a so huge know, number of yeah so i know i did that for the girls i don't remember doing that for the boys um but e- so, either way how yeah, close no, is that how close is that right yeah 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 so so first the first thing i would say is is florida did have i think 10 junior girls in the blood round so 10 junior girls in the blood round and they end up going four of six in the blood round um, for get through, um, you know, Milana, my uh, Christina Borgman, who looked absolutely fantastic uh, and Kanea Moore, uh, who ended up taking eighth. Um, and, you know, you get to, uh, this is where I think it's really important. Like you get to that blood round and it's, um, you know, that, that, I mean, you're, you're down to the top 12 wrestlers in the nation. I mean, this is, you know, the top, the, the number three through number 12 are sitting there competing with one another to get onto the podium in Fargo after grinding through a hugely difficult tournament. Is it, it do you want to go nine and one? Do you want to go 10 and a hundred percent, right? You want to go, you want every single one of those kids to win. I mean, they're so close to being all Americans. Um, but you know, you, you look around and somebody is pulling a stud coming back through. Um, and unfortunately for some of them, one of them was pulling Maya Bethel, you know, from another state was pulling Maya. Right. And and that was, that was going to be tough. I mean, she was just going to roll right through you because, you know, I would I, I haven't calculated it up, but I'd really like to know the number of quarter finalists that lose and then lose again. Because it's so hard to think that you're one match away from the semis. Your goal is to win a title, and now you're fighting for your life on the backside in that blood round. So and if but, you get knocked out early, if you get knocked out early, it's like 12. I mean. You've got to go through a ton of matches. It is. But, you know, one of the things you do is you create there, – there's an element of creating some momentum. You're not coming off a loss. You're coming off a, you're coming off wins, many wins in a row. You know what I mean? And that can actually have a huge impact on you. Um, so – and especially the girls, I was thinking, the blood round happened that next morning. So you leave the – you leave the event, the arena with a loss in the quarters and your next match, the next morning, if you have not put your head in the right spot to think about how you're going to overcome that loss, you could take another loss (laughs) and then be out. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm just impressed at how the, 
the depth of Florida is getting better. And we have a lot of young kids that went out in that blood round that are yeah. going to be back. And, um, and then we have a lot of kids that sixth, seventh grade, that'll be eighth grade next year that are absolute hammers coming up. And I think um, the process is working there as far as uh, surprises on the Florida side. What was, uh, did you have a couple of kids that you, you thought, huh, interesting. I didn't pick that one or wow. That one looked good. <clears throat> Um, interesting. Um, it's a good question. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I, I think if I were to look through it, I'm not, I'm not surprised by Giovanni's, the Giovanni's, Giovanni Solis or Giovanni Tovar, right? Um, kind of expected them. KJ has been onto the podium previously. Wasn't surprised by his presence there. Peter was a 16U, um, uh, is a first year 16U, but you know, the name Mako, whether it's right or wrong, kind of sets you up that it's not going to be a surprise if you make the podium, and it's not, you know, uh, the expectation is there. Um, you know, and then you, you, you look at, you know, you look at your juniors, and your juniors, you know, much better, like the CJ Torres's, the Zeno Moores, the Gunnar Hollands, the Anderson Heaps. You know, these are all kids that uh, that you're not really surprised about them being present. Um, I know you uh, want to say Roderick Brown. We're not surprised by Roderick, but because but he didn't, but he didn't pick him. I, <laughs> <clears throat> but because Roderick was what a blood rounder last year, right? Yeah. So to see him and, get through uh, and be on the podium. And the but blood you, round and freestyle again this year. But, you know, I, I was going to say Tyree Graham. I mean, he had a tough that is last the year. I, I was going to go with two names, and Tyree Graham was one of the names. Yeah, I, I thought he had a hell of a tournament. Right. So Graham Graham actually had a, an unbelievably good tournament um, in both styles. I think he only All-American in freestyle. But he wrestled both styles exceptionally tough. Um, and then the other one was um, Reed Yakes, who uh, made really the podium good. in uh, 16 U Greco. Um, you know, I, I wasn't surprised by any of the girls, Kanea Moore, Christina Borgman, uh, Borelli, and uh, Maya Bethel all making the podium. Those, I probably would have said I would expect all of them to make the podium. Um, but I, I again, this is such an important thing yeah. that to yeah. talk about because if you're in the state, you're looking at Gunnar Holland, right? Or Anderson Heat, and and you're saying, How is how how did Gunnar Holland take seventh in junior Greco or junior freestyle? And you go, like, I don't, I mean, if unless you've been there and you see who they're wrestling and the level of competition that they're competing against, this is the best of the best. That bracket was 200, was 256 kids. Unbelievable. And Gunner wrestled his butt off. And I'll and tell he, you what, one of the things that I absolutely love is he wrestled his seventh, eighth place match as hard as he wrestled any other match in the tournament. Yeah, and then he said to both of us off the mat, Man, thank God I was in a college room the last couple months. He says, I, I've never, obviously, for circumstances that he couldn't control, he didn't make it the last few years. But um, he said, this is the hardest tournament he's, I mean, I think he's ever been a part of was he was saying. He was saying, if I, I never knew how hard this tournament was or realized it. And if I didn't practice the last two months with with college kids, there's no way I all American here. I mean, you were there. So. Yep. Yep. No, I, I, I think there's a realization, um, you know, uh, it, it's why in my preview or my fans guide, I wrote, you know, day two, right. Day two on the thing, because there are a lot of kids who don't get to day two. It's a lot of money. It's a long way to go to go. zero and two to go one and two. And it's a great experience to have, but a lot of people go up there wanting to win a title or have these aspirations to win a title. And the truth is 
they're not they're not they're not really they're not really all that close. And in getting three and two or four and two, getting four wins in Fargo is a is a hell of an accomplishment. It really is. Um and it getting a win. Getting a win is I mean. well, and hopefully what it does is is it sets the person up to understand like this is the level I need to get to. This is how I need to get there. And am I going to continue this process? And that's actually one of the things I like about Team Florida and what they're doing. Yes, in years past, they've had 20 All-Americans or 26 All-Americans. I think in 2022, they had 30 All-Americans. Um, you know, this year they had 19 All-Americans. So, you know, we do see these ebbs and flows as it kind of goes with every single state. But it's every single state. Some are up, some are down. Some are up, some are down. And it depends upon this group of coming in. Are they first year 16 news? Are they second year 16 news? Are they this? Are they that? Um, and and you, where are they in the process and where will they be? And are they going to continue that process of getting better? Also, remember, Team Florida, as well as many other states, they left some kids at home that probably could have could have made a run to the podium. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, I think that Bowie, Mako, and Bartelt are uh, they would have something to say about the finals. I think they they're pretty good. They what do they have? Two, four, six stop signs between them. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, so they're yeah they they're terrible. The one thing uh, that Mason said was he's always excited to see. Um, like kids like Roderick, Heap, and first of all, congratulations to Heap and 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 Gunner, both to do it together. They've been together since they were like five years old. They've won state tournaments together. They've won many tournaments together. They went on their recruiting trips together. Uh, very close friends, and to see them finally all American at this tournament together, good for them. But what he what he said was he likes to see kids like Rod, blood round kid. Gunner, who hadn't been there yet, and Heap, who they're all they've all graduated. They all have their plans together. They're all they have what they needed. They're ready to go to college, but they still felt like they had unfinished business, and they decided to make the trip and to to see kids come out like that and 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 do that for any state. He he has a lot of respect for that. So uh, yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, I agree. Because there's yeah. a lot of people who they finish, they've already decided they're gonna they're gonna go to college or wrestle or or whatever, but they still look at it with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, right? And they're like, yeah, I got I got I got some things I need to get done, right? So speaking of um, things that are pretty cool, um, we had I think it was three sibling pairs, all American from the southeast. Uh, very cool. Mills, right? obviously, is one of them. Right? The, the Mills, Araya Mills and Antonio Mills, both All-American for the state of Georgia. Genevieve and Ronan Ahn from the state of Georgia, both All-American, uh, brother-sister. And and we missed in the state of Tennessee, Zachary and Jarvis Little, um, who who both All-American for the state of Tennessee. So, um, you know, and, and I forgot to ask I you that's that fun. Um, before we go on to Georgia. But anyway, shout out to Florida. Listen. 19 All-Americans is a hell of a job. I'm proud of my state. Uh, I'm proud of those kids. They go out there and they work hard and and uh, and good for everybody. Congratulations to everyone. But I forgot to ask you on the Tennessee side, was there anybody that that surprised you that that ended up on the All-American or, or made a run? Um, yeah, so I wasn't surprised by any of the kids who made – the podium for the state of Tennessee. The one thing that I was, I, I was uncertain of, and that was Ryder Smith. Ryder Smith um, wrestles for a little Chattanooga Christian school, right? Um, he dominates the, the division two uh, tournament up there, but I had never seen him on the national national stage. I'd never seen him. And a lot of times kids who dominate in a particular area, they go to a big tournament and they don't, it doesn't necessarily translate because they're not used to that level of competition. Ryder Smith 
ran all the way to the 16U freestyle finals at 215 pounds. He wrestled a kid from Wisconsin in the semifinals who was six foot seven. <laughs> Tallest wrestler I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, but no, Ryder, Ryder wrestled great. And I wasn't surprised to see him on the podium. But man, he just proved to me that that yeah, I knew he was a real deal. And but, he's only 16. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't look 16, man. He's a he's a big, <laughs> strong kid. Big, strong kid. Yeah. I mean, I would listen, there were, there were kids wrestling juniors that are freshmen in, in high school. Yeah. So, so that's, Well, and there are kids wrestling juniors <laughs> who will be 16 or who will be um, freshmen in college this coming fall. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And uh, uh, one thing, <laughs> and, and, and there's a lot to talk about with Georgia. I know Georgia had a a good showing. Um, but the one thing, uh, South Carolina, uh, how about Zell finally pulling it off? Huh? Yeah. So, so I'm glad you transitioned there. Let's talk about, let's talk about North Carolina first, then let's go to South Carolina. And I want to just say real quick, because North Carolina did not have any all Americans, which is the first time in a number of years that they haven't. And the thing that was really surprising about the state of North Carolina was this was probably their best squad that they brought. So just because you bring a great <clears throat> squad doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make the podium. They had more wins. They had better wrestling going on this weekend. But if you're only counting all Americans, they look like they took a step back and that's not the way to count things. Okay. Um, is counting all Americans an important count? Absolutely. <laughs> but, but state of North Carolina had Anna Ackerman, Bentley Sly, they had a number of individuals make the blood round super close to making the uh, the top, the podium um, for their age group and for their weight. Um, they just came up a little bit short. It's talking about not coming up a little bit short <laughs> and finally punching her ticket as a Fargo champ. Huge shout out to... Zeo Estrada. It was so good to see Zeo overcome. And man, oh, I'll tell absolutely. you what, you weren't there, but she looked, she looked like she was on a mission. She, yeah, and I, I kept trying to, to watch it on my phone, but it would pause and then it would go, and then it would pause and it would go. And then finally I, I saw the the prayer towards the end. So I, I wasn't there live, obviously with you being there live. Uh, that was, uh, that must've been, been awesome, but we're definitely uh, going to have her back on the show here. Uh, not today as we, as we recap, but I, I she knows that uh, we want her back on. Yeah. So Zao Zao made a great run. Um, Annalise Merrillett, who was an all American a couple years ago for 16 U, she was the other all American for the girls. Um, South Carolina had uh quite a few, what they had seven all Americans. That might have um, been one of their best years, I think. I saw somebody post, right? Where oh, it was definitely better, one of their best years. Yeah, they they have had one, two, four, five in years past, but you know where they made hay? They made they made their their presence known. In Greco, except for the girls, except for the girls who won freestyle, no other All Americans from South Carolina were in freestyle. And they had some good runs in freestyle, but Case and Howell, Riley Hux, Montero Royal, Steve, Steve, Stefano Cal, uh, Calderon, and William Jakeway all were All Americans in Greco. Uh, and it's William not a surprise. Jakeway, man. I am so happy to see William Jakeway doing so well. I remember meeting him for the first time during COVID and he came on my show as a little guy. And every time I see him at every tournament, he comes up, gives me a hug. And now he's a, he's a grown kid. He's wrestling juniors. He has stuck with the same coach and the same process throughout from Colorado all the way to South Carolina. He's moved with him and, and it's obviously paying off for him and good for him. Yeah, you know, so uh, I, I will say 
South Carolina is on the precipice of really being good in Greco. Like, I mean, it's a smaller state. They're never going to dominate. They're never going to be like, they're not likely going to be winning a, a team title in Greco necessarily. Although Idaho did it, I think last year, two years ago, and it's a small state. Um, but man, I'll tell you what, they're getting better and better and being better in Greco they're they wrestled well in freestyle as well. I mean, Case and Howell took fourth, I think, in Greco and nearly made the podium in freestyle as well. Um, and you know, obviously, pretty, pretty people, um, people sometimes take Coach Estrada the wrong way, but you know what the right way is to take him? The boy can, the man can coach, he loves the kids, and he's really, um, he's really brought something to Tennessee with, with what he's doing down there. And South I mean, Carolina. to South Carolina, to what he's doing down there. And, um, and I think even all the coaches around South Carolina would probably say it, it, it's been a, it's been good to have him coming in. You know, he is who he is. God bless him. He's come a long way and, and you and I know him. And, uh, and I'm really happy for he and his family that they're doing well. But I think, his focus on that Olympic, those Olympic styles and nothing else is, is we can see the growth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even, even kids who didn't make the podium, like Cy Strobel or George Mayholtz, or I, mean, I could go through a list of actually South Carolina kids who made deep runs through the tournament. They wrestled really, really well. Um, I, I was impressed. I was impressed. If, if you were to, if you were to ask me the seven, teams right Tennessee would be my number one team as far as the most impressed of kind of what I expected um just because they really really performed exceptionally well South Carolina would be number two um to get Montero Royal into the finals against Hayden Schwab in Greco uh in 16U he he I mean he lost but and I know he's very very disappointed by that loss but he had a great run. I and I have some beautiful pictures of some throws that Montero's <laughs> like tossing some kid all the way around. So yeah, it was it was um it was fun to watch. And again, Zayo, uh man, good for you. She said you you either want to lose your first match of the tournament or win your last. <laughs> so she finally uh won her last. And you know, a lot of the wrestlers tell me. They'd rather come in third than second, and just to win that last match. I hear it a lot from the from the kids and and some as they grow up. I think I think when they become adults, looking back, they might say, "Damn, I wish I would have been in the finals there. That would have been cool, right?" But I think something about winning that last match and being able to walk off, like, okay, that was a good tournament, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's it's. I I don't know how I feel about that statement. I mean. I understand it. Um, yeah, I, I certainly understand it in the moment. In the moment, it's got to be like the worst feeling in the absolute world. Um, if you ask them three weeks afterwards, would they feel differently? Well, Zayo doesn't. Zayo, Zayo will tell you, no, I, I, no, taking second sucks. I don't want to do that. Anymore, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. And you saw Giovanni's post after the tournament. I did he not. Posted on he posted a picture on his story. Uh, I think it was your shot because you were on the back side of him and I was on the front side of him. And so you got that shot of him bent over. Oh, yeah. And I sent him the other side of it because I happened to be on the other side and got the same shot. So I was like, well, now you have both sides. But he posted that up on his story and he posted second place sucks with a sad face. That's all he posted. And, uh, and listen, coming from Zayo, this is somebody that has experienced both sides of that statement, right? So, um she can tell you how much it sucked to be in second and and uh, and all that. You know, side note, I know we're talking about the girls. Side note, I know he wrestles for Pennsylvania now, but she is a Florida girl to us and just heartbroken for the way uh, Val's tournament ended there with the concussion. I was really rooting for her. So I, I sure hope Val's getting better. I hope she's doing better and I look forward to seeing what she does in college uh, she's off to Iowa but you were there for that match and um mm -hmm. I was trying to watch it on the phone and I caught kind of that part of it and 
Uh, yeah, just a little heartbroken for her. She's a great girl, great young lady, and I was I was hoping to see her go off to the sunset with another stop sign. Yeah, um, you know it's it's one of those situations. I, <laughs> I I was actually having the conversation with a couple of people around me when it happened, and um, I'm a huge advocate. I should say, like I I do think that uh, I I do think we're doing the right thing. Like we we should take a moment we should see if a kid is really okay you know i mean back in the day man i i got my bell rung and like they just picked me how up how many fingers are, they'd go like this how many fingers am i holding up and you'd say two and they'd be all right give him this helmet back he's good yeah so <laughs> I, I mean but that said um you know i i wasn't i wasn't probably 15 feet from val watching her do the concussion protocol it, it looked like she was okay i don't i'm not a trainer i don't know like i i can't say anything um i, I could tell she, it almost like became a little bit of an anxiety thing for her because as they were really questioning her and everything she, i think there came a realization of oh my goodness i'm like this my, my match might be done um and that kind of like you know kind of made you feel like I needed to answer all the questions right and and all the things and everything else. Yeah. Um I I like I I I'm again I'm a supporter of of going through the process and everything else. Val is gonna have a wonderful career. She's gonna do fantastic in the future. Um it, this is one one event. No big deal. Right. I know yeah. it means the world right now, but but if they got it right and they didn't allow her to compete because they got it right, that's okay. She's going to have a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> career, life, so on and so forth. Yeah. And speaking of that, there's a lot of, we, we, we hear a lot, you know, we're always quick to say, Oh, Fargo should have done this better. The ref should have done that better. The medical staff should have done that better. They should have done that better. I tell you what, the medical staff did a, did a great job with concussion protocol, at least the, the, the last four days I was there. Look, I watched a lot of kids get told it was over in tears, but it's a, it, they came out, they would call and get a second opinion. They wouldn't just make the decision. The one trainer wouldn't just make the decision by his or herself. You would call in or he would call in for a second opinion. You'd see the, the doctor come out or whoever the, the head medical staff was come out they would then go through the protocol with them and then they would determine at that moment pass or fail right so i i'm really glad that they did that i know some people out there might say they passed people that should have failed them and they failed people they should have passed them and blah 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 but i was i was glad to see um, the process that way because i've seen things i mean a few years ago in our state where the kid got thrown on the concrete and then they stood him back up and they let him wrestle. And then he got, then he landed back on the outside and he stood up and then they let him wrestle. And then he ends up winning the match and wins the state title. So then it's hard to say, Oh my God, that was awesome. He came back. To win the... But as a parent of children, I, I, I know how important it is to win a state title, but man, you just hope in the future. That guy... yeah, it, it's not that important. I mean, yeah. I never won one. So I, I mean, but I will tell you that. Yeah. I, I look, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of the process. Like let the process yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Far too often during the course of, of the history of all sorts of sports, but history of wrestling, not being like definitely being a part of that is there are people who should not step back on the mat after, after getting their bell rung. And now listen, I'm happy. And I I'm don't happy. know. And I don't know yeah. about that. I, I, I just don't know. And I listen, I'm very happy for the young man in Florida that came back and the crowd went crazy. Remember it? It was so wild. And I do, but I, I was stoked. I was guy. so, it was, there's no way in the world he should have been back on the mat. Oh, it was, it was, it was my, my sister in law, who is a physical therapist and a sports, whatever, whatever, an athletic trainer, whatever, whatever. And she has her master's in it. So she's not, she didn't just go get her certification. She is someone that does this for a living for many years, and she was frustrated by watching the process. But yeah. I got to tell you, it was done and handled 
very well in Fargo as far as when I was there. I, I thought it was good because we want these kids to be able to wrestle and be able to get good grades and be able to think and grow up and have a family and do things cognizantly. But Georgia, man, Ariah Mills, wow. That's all I can say is wow. That little yeah. guy, he showed up. He came to wrestle and and man oh man did he did he do it and it it wasn't a walk in the park for for him his bracket was deep his brackets were strong and uh that kid wrestled his tushy off yeah so so we're finishing up with georgia um sorry for this for the georgia people that it took us this long to get to the state of georgia but yeah yeah sorry we do end with it's my ADD. I get off we, and I we do end a with hole. a we do end with a bang because Araya is one of the few. Now I would say it's been a while since we've seen somebody cart around two stop signs, but that's actually not true. Michael Mako had it for the state of Florida last year, carrying around two stop signs. So, um, but it is a pretty rare occurrence. It's not something that happens all that often to win both styles. Araya did something that very few people have done in that. He won it in two different weights. Won it at 88. Wow. And he won it at 94. He won it at 88 in freestyle. 94, excuse me, in Greco. And you know what? Um, Drew, I, so the junior, the, the freestyle boys for the state of Georgia were, were pretty special. Drew Gorman made the finals. Came very close to beating Vega. Looked fantastic on his way. Gabe Swan, new to Baylor in the, in the fall, but a knockout champion, two-time Georgia State champion, won a title for um, for uh, Georgia. And, you know, I, I got a little bit of grief from the Swan family because when I picked – can't miss hammer, right? I picked can't miss hammer for juniors as being Drew Gorman. And I mentioned Bambinelli and Logan Paradise and uh, Antonio Mills and lots of these different names. I did not mention Gabe Swan. And I didn't mention Gabe Swan for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's a first year junior. So he won a Fargo title as a first year junior and he won it in a weight class. I haven't seen Gabe Russell that well ever like he wrestled on another level in Fargo and I expected it with Araya. I expected it with lots of different individuals. Genevieve Vaughn made a run to third in her final Fargo appearance. Um, but there were a couple people that I was, was surprised. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not surprised that I, I should say, I'm not surprised that Swan was an all American. He, he dom. I mean, he really dominated to get to the finals. Then he got down, wrestled super smart, and found a way to come back and win the title. I mean, it was he wrestled so so well. So anyway, it was um, uh, it was it was uh, it was fun to watch. And yeah, like you said, I mean Georgia. I mean, they had two two in the finals in sixteen. U men Greco. They had. Uh, one win it. They had a champ and a fifth placer in in sixteen U freestyle, and then the girls they had a finalist in Gorbazovas. I probably totally screwed that up. Gorbazovas, yeah. Up with seventh, and then, and then yeah, the big the big four of uh, Mills, Stifler, Gorman, and Swan that uh, that that did that in the freestyle, and then uh greco a, a kid i really love is common tank weaver what a special young man he is and and, and emil ne email nicola 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 sorry if i uh, screwed emil, up, but emil nicola yeah and so and genevieve genevieve on as you mentioned um earlier but yeah I, I, yeah conlin tank what an awesome kid you know i got to meet him a couple times and he's just what a cool family He's so I, I I love talking to Tank. He he's such a such a good kid. I, I really young man man. I mean he's he's off to college this coming year. Um, he's one who has just continually got him better. And I'm gonna let everybody know that was not paying attention to the brackets nearly as closely as some of us were. But Tank drew the number one seed 
in both freestyle and in Greco. He lost his first match in both styles. And he wrestled had all the way back. Wrestled all the way back through in Greco to make the podium. Wrestled all the way back through in freestyle and got near the podium. I mean, Tank, talk about talk about being like he had a he had a he had a tough draw. And uh and man, I it just shows the kind of metal that somebody has to kind of battle through to come back through and 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 yeah. do that. I thought, and it was I, you cool. know, and, and I thought, um, I mean, there was a few, if, 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 if there were some screwings going on, <laughs> we saw KJ get, get, get caught in one by the line. He got KJ, uh, the, the guy stepped out of bounds, then proceeded to throw KJ for four. The ref falls down and rolls around. There's no way the ref sees it. They look at each other and they throw up four. You can't challenge. I mean, you could challenge if you want, but the camera can't see the corners, and it cost it cost KJ to move on, and it was tough. And then the Antonio Mills match in Greco. I remember you and I walking in, and uh, and they came running up to you and they said something happened, bad call for him there. Yeah. Uh, well, and Antonio, on. Antonio might have feel like might have felt like he got a bad call in freestyle because. He lost a one-point match to the eventual champion, Engage Batero, in the quarterfinals. I think it was the quarterfinals. And Batero stepped out. Botero stepped out. They continued the action. Botero got the takedown. No point awarded for the step out. And I guess that's the right call is that the action has to continue. Um, but I thought the action had to continue so that the person who got the step out was afforded the opportunity to get two instead of one. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, I will say it's very difficult to, to officiate. It's very difficult to, to have all those things come together. Yeah. Uh, last thing I would say is um, two shout outs, JT Taylor, uh, USA wrestling developmental coach of the year. Um, that's fantastic. Team Florida uh, was awarded that uh, before, the Greco final or the freestyle final before the freestyle final and Kale Tucker was who wrestled last year for the state of Alabama as a freshman. He was the official of the tournament for the juniors as an 18 year old, 19 year old. I don't know how old Kale is, but he's only a freshman in in college. Um, he wrestled or he, he officiated, unbelievably well and i'm telling you the level of officiating is very different and he is a fantastic official you know something i wanted to say is um schools uh you saw south dade had a good showing mm -hmm. uh lhp had a good showing with four yep. all americans um tampa jesuit had a couple of kids all american um, I'm not so familiar with, with around the other states yet, as I'm learning. I'm trying. I do my research. But uh, you had mentioned Baylor had a good showing. Mm -hmm. Was there any other um, programs where you saw multiple kids come out? I mean, I, uh, um, Mill Osceola, Creek. Uh, oh. Osceola obviously had two. Mill Creek. Mill had Creek two had with both Mills boys. Um, so the one thing that might fly under the radar that, that, uh, is a school by a small school. So everybody you mentioned is a pretty big school, small school in the state of Georgia, Lumpkin County, Lumpkin County had Greta Garbazovas and Caden Skrula, two 16 U L Americans, both wrestle at Lumpkin County. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, do, do you want to give a shout out to Roderick Brown for all American in the, in the Greco? I already did. And Roderick. Oh, okay. Rod, Roderick, <laughs> you, did, you did fantastic. I, <laughs> I thought you were doing going to do great. Dan was the one who was behind the scenes telling me that he wasn't sure. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, definitely. Uh, um, definitely. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, this became a, a show talking about lots of different names and, and talking about lots of different individuals and we didn't get to everyone. 
We didn't talk about everyone. It's just impossible to do so. The one thing I would say, though, is there were a lot of wrestlers who had some really good tournaments who didn't make the podium, but should feel very, very proud of themselves for the way that they wrestled at the toughest tournament in the world. The toughest tournament for high school kids. Yeah, and and speaking of Rod, one of my favorite moments was when he, after his placing match, he came over and he hugged me. And when he hugged me, he goes, I did it, I did it, I did it. And then, and then of course, Mason was there and, and Mason hugged him and, and uh, just good for him. And yeah. um, good for all those guys. But, you know, there was um, any matches that were fun to watch. That stuck, I mean, one match that sticks out in my mind is uh, Jace Paradon and Sam Herring. That was a really fun match to watch. I mean, uh, probably one of the best matches I've seen Jace wrestle, even though it, it came in a loss. But obviously we know how good Sam Herring is. And, and But that was a really fun match to watch. Even you know, even though our Florida guy was on on the wrong end of it, but I think even talking to Jace after the match, he would tell you that he wrestled well, and, and you know he's he's improving. But that was a match that was really fun to watch. Um, anything anything that sticks out in your mind? Uh, um, C.J. Torres and uh, and Melvin Miller. Melvin, it was a great match. Listen, I, I know my boy C.J. Love him like a son, and uh, and I know he was on the on the, on the south end of that. But man, he wrestled really well. It was a really fun match to watch. Uh, Melvin just got him there at the end with with a couple of quick points. But that was a very entertaining match to watch. You know, there's there's actually um, th- there's there's actually I mean, there's so many. I, I, I like I can't I can't pick oh. out any matches. And- Giovanni Solis winning with three seconds left to make the finals. I I I, I dropped my camera went and started screaming and then realized, shit, I need to take a picture. And I put it back up and I got it just in time for the, the high five and the celebration because I I, I just went nuts. Peter Maka, and I know it's Florida because I only was shooting Florida. Maybe one day I can grow up and help him shoot all seven. But um, right now I'm just a baby and I stay in one state. Um, but Peter Maka coming back from like a 12.7 point t- twice was was incredible. No, uh, there were I, – I mean, and, and, and as, a rest, as a fan, right, uh, as a fan <laughs> – it's hard to take in everything, but I'll tell you what, when they're on the stage and there's only two matches going on and you're able to focus in and take pictures um, and, um, and, and watch the wrestling, the level of wrestling of a, of a Keegan Bassett, the the level of wrestling of, of a angel, uh, Angelo Posada, the level of wrestling of some of these kids that you don't necessarily, you may not know they wrestle for other States, but I'll tell you what, just so much fun to watch so much fun to watch. These are kids that you're going to know in the future. If you don't know them now. Um, I mean, a really, really good match was, uh, KJ and is it Bowie boo? The, the, The young man from Indiana that goes to Lake Highland prep. Yeah. I mean that match came down to like the last thirty I seconds. I think it's Bo, but I could be Bo. wrong. Bo, Bo, KJ, and Bo. That was a fantastic match to watch, and uh, you could see be- because Bo is at a Florida school now. You could see all the Florida coaches and all the Florida kids that know him and everybody around I'm watching both sides of that. Uh, that was that was fantastic. I mean, that could have went either way, right there. That, that was a fun match to watch. And congratulations, obviously, to Bo, who went on to become a champion, correct? He did, yeah. Yep, and uh, good for him. I, I, did he All-American in Greco, too? I think he All-American in Greco also. I think he did, yep. So good for him. Shout out to him. Indiana, backslash, Lake Highland Prep. Congratulations to to them. But but yeah, But and of course, Kate, we love KJ, but that was – I mean, I could just keep going. There were so many. Well, there were there were so many good matches. I mean, there were there was some really good wrestling. There were some great matches. Um, yeah, go go watch go watch go watch the level of 
Um, you know, you want to watch a really interesting match. Watch Gabe Swan in his finals match get up, then get behind, keep his composure. No, he has a four point throw or a four point move in his back pocket. So he has criteria and watch his way of wrestling the match, his way of wrestling the last 30 seconds of that match is just, a, it's, it's really important because you have to win matches like that to win Fargo titles. So, yeah. yeah um, and then I keep, um, and I, I got to tell you, as, as somebody taking pictures there, sometimes you catch yourself going, oh, wait a second. I want to watch this match. It's so good. <laughs> and you realize, well, you're going to take pictures of it, right? Um, <laughs> All right. So are we, uh, are we talking Olympics next week? What are we doing? Yeah. The uh, next week is Tuesday. I don't think I'll be here. Well, I may be able to do something. I'll be, yeah. um, let's see. I think Sunday. Sunday night we go down to the Keys and we're there till, I think Wednesday. Oh, must be nice. Yeah. Jo- hey, I guess his job is keeping him busy. <laughs> All right. Well, it, you guys uh, may see us for another another edition. You or next week? You might not, depending on whether Dan is can tear himself away from a um a a a a, a, a drink on the beach. And um, <laughs> and uh, while well, the rest of us are all beginning school again and working and focused in on stuff. Yeah, you never know. Um, yeah, we're going to go down to see my dad because Daniel has, uh, what, two more, I think two more weeks, and then he goes back to um, college. So we're going to go down and spend a few days with Grandpa so he can see him and uh, have a few days to hang out with him. And I was just on here. I was looking... I was just looking up on the Marine Corps Junior Nationals. Okay, Florida. It goes in alphabetical order, right? Oh, there it is. I'm just blind. Yeah, it was good matches. Lots of of fun to watch. (laughs) I had a good time. I was sick, by the way, for all four <laughs> days, and it was just terrible. No, nope, nobody needs to hear that. Nobody needs Thank to God. know he was sick, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. All Thank right. God I was staying with he and his wife. And oh man, we had a nice Airbnb. But, it was a great trip. It was a great trip. Yes, I, I want to have the the proper brothers pasta fazilizzi with sausage when I'm not sick because. It was, it was, it was good. I, I vaguely remember it, but it was good. I want to have it when I'm healthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Pasta fazili, proper Dan, boys. Dial. Dan. Yes. Who, who do you have coming on the show? Anybody, anybody today? Nobody today. Just the dirty South podcast, baby. All I right. do have to go um, help my father-in-law with something, so I'm going to go do that and then come back and edit this. All right. <laughs> well, guys, on that note, and we don't need to know Dan's schedule, we will uh, we will see you next week. We appreciate you uh, joining us for a Fargo recap. It was a ton of fun. I-, I had a great time. I always have a great time. Yeah, and maybe we should try to reach out to um... – the five champs and have them come on. All right. Maybe. Works for me. Maybe next week's show. Yeah, let's do it. I like it. All right, right, man. You take care. All right. See you, bud.